Should you be stacking silver bars? Well, we're going to talk about that and more, so stay tuned. What is up, YouTube? Silver and Gold Stack Attack coming at you with another episode. Hope everyone's doing well, and I'd like to thank you for checking out the latest video here at the channel. Uh, you got a ton of choices to pick from on YouTube, and I really appreciate you being here. And as always, if you'd like to help support the channel, then uh, hey, why not take a jab at that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Yeah, got to trigger those algorithms. Also, if you click on that bell, you'll be notified when a new video drops. Uh, anyway, you guys know the support does mean a lot, and we are making that steady climb to 1,000 subs. All right, so silver bars. Uh, there seem to be a lot of differing opinions on these since we have a lot of stock to choose from when it comes to rounds and bullion, constitutional, silver bars, or hell, a combination of all of them. Everybody's different in how they go about it. Now, me personally, if it has silver in it, I'll buy it. Nothing's really out of bounds for me except for that high dollar collectible stuff like proofs and whatnot. Uh, I'm just not into them. Do they look good? Yeah, they look fantastic. Do they hold value? Absolutely. Just not my wheelhouse for what I'm trying to do with silver. Um, now I do have bars, rounds, coins, constitutional, commemoratives, just about anything. But are there any advantages to silver bars? Well, before we get into it, let's clarify the major difference between coins and bars. And that is, with very few exceptions, coins are defined as legal tender, whereas bars are not. Now, there are a couple of quote unquote coin bars out there, but they're few and far between. Another major difference is value. Government-backed coins are definitely going to cost you more than your run-of-the-mill generic silver bar, uh, but you're paying a higher premium for your Eagles, Maples, Britannias, etc. Yeah, bars are definitely cheaper, but you're going to have to keep in mind that while you're paying less for these bars, you're going to get less back on them in a sale. Now, government-backed coins sell for more in just about any scenario, and unless the price of silver is blown up, even then you probably won't recover your premium on government-backed, but you'll definitely get more from them than you would over a bar. Another thing to be mindful of is generic bars typically take the worst, I mean the worst hit when it comes to a resale. Uh, one exception to this might be if you're selling peer-to-peer, -peer, which can be substantially more beneficial than selling to a dealer. Yeah, I heard you the first time. Winner to the king, $500. <laughs> Shut up, eh? Right? So all that said, there are two distinct advantages for adding silver bars to your vault. Number one. They're a quick and easy way to add weight to your stack if you're budgeting. And number two, they store really nicely, taking up a minimum of space. All right, moving on, moving on. Uh, when it comes to silver bars, I like to use six levels of classification and categories. I mean, we already know that there are different weights to choose from, with the most common being the, the one ounce, five ounce, 10 ounce, kilos, 100 ounce bars. Those are all examples of weight. But from how I see it, they really do fall into different categories value-wise. And I'm gonna give them to you right now. Level one is going to be your pure generic bar. No mint name, no fuss, no muss, no nothing. Uh, these include cast and poured, and these are the bars you're going to buy at the lowest rate. And they are the best for adding weight to your stack. But overall, very forgettable silver. Oh, Johnny, I apologize. I forgot you were there. All right, level two is gonna be your secondary mint bars. These are gonna be marked by the respective mints and you're gonna have all kinds of designs to choose from. And I gotta tell you, these are some quality bars. These are, you can't sneeze at these. J and Bullion makes a fantastic generic bar. Atmex is, is pretty much the same, not too shabby. These are good looking bars. I think this one's what, JBR? Yep, it's a JBR bar right there. Fantastic looking bars. All right, so those are level two bars, your secondary mints. All right, level three is gonna be your major mint bars. Britannia, for example. Uh, major mints like the Royal Canadian Mint and the Royal Mint in England, they do issue some really fantastic bars. And because of their link to the core mints, uh, these are definitely gonna carry a higher premium than your secondary and generic bars. They're not cheap. That Britannia bar still isn't cheap, okay? All right, level four is your vintage stuff. For example, just generic vintage stuff. Um, 
These are the bars that are going to sell more for their age and collectability. And some mint names sell for more than others. I mean, Engelhard comes to mind for sure. Um, I mean, even the dirtiest and most toned Engelhard bars will sell for insane, crazy prices on the secondary. And if you get that rainbow toning, look out. Collectors love that stuff and they will definitely pay a higher premium. All right, level five. These are going to be your collectible bars. Uh, definitely more expensive. So these are typically your limited edition bars. Um, they're going to sell more. They are definitely going to sell for more uh, because you're going to have higher premiums due to the collectability on these. For example, this Una and the Lion was limited to only 10,000, I think. Man, look at the spotting on that. That's crazy. Collectible bar. It's a shame. But uh, again, these are going to be limited editions with much higher premiums. And if you're a serious stacker going for weight, uh, you'll probably want to stay away from these. They were definitely meant to appeal to the uh, collecting sector. No question. All right. And level six is going to be your coin bars. Uh, these are far less common and they'll actually have a denomination. Uh, I don't have any to show you, but uh, I'll show you in a slide coming up. A uh, couple that do come to mind are the $1 Dragon Bars from Australia and the 10-pound uh, East India Trade Company Bar from St. Helena. Uh, I just don't stack these. I really don't. So, again, don't have any to show you, but you see them in the slide that I showed you before. All right, all right. So there you have it, the different levels of silver bars and the advantages of each. Uh, be sure to let me know your thoughts on silver bars in the comments down below, and let, let me know if you think I missed any levels. So... To answer the question in the video, are silver bars worth stacking? Absolutely. They are absolutely worth adding to your stack. Uh, just be mindful of what you're buying, how high you're buying them, and don't get too crazy with the collectible stuff. Uh, you could take a loss on that. And that is going to wrap it up for this episode of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. And if you made it this far, then, well, kudos to you. I will definitely catch up with you in the next episode. But in the meantime, you know what we're doing. Damn right. Get stacked. Stay safe and be well, everyone. Have a great week ahead. I am out of here. Peace, people.